Good morning, everyone. Today is going to be an amazing Tuesday. We're going to talk about how to be how to be safe using right. e-commerce and different types of website solutions. Uh, today, uh, it's myself. It's Brandon Krieger okay. from uh, KNSS Consulting. You got Monty uh, from right. Spy Gadget Rentals. Uh, we've been here mm-hmm. every Tuesday. This is our twenty-first episode, so we're doing a lot of great things uh, to help educate people on cybersecurity for you and your business. So, Monty, how how is your week so far? Uh, yeah, it's um, turning out to be a productive week. Um, managing to to to, to learn a lot about. Uh, e-commerce and some of the things that are uh, currently, um, you know, a lot of current challenges. Um, but, but it seems like going forward, you know, we are, we're going to have some additional things to take a look at to help make us all safe. Um, haven't had any major uh, uh, catastrophes or crisis uh, for as my business or my personal situations are concerned. So I'm pretty much happy, <laughs> you know, considering that definitely. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. some of the things like you were just kind of looking at the news and all that. I mean, if you follow Scurry, they're talking about, uh, I'm just looking up here on my notes, uh, Jetpack is one of the plugins that they're telling people now to look out because a million websites are at risk right now of a, a vulnerability through Jetpack, which is one of the plugins, which actually is supposed to be providing security. Oh, okay. right? wow. For the website. Wow. So things that, I mean, when you look at e-commerce and when you look at purchasing, uh, having sales on your website, having clients coming through and doing setting up properly, some of the tools that you might be using that's supposed to be securing your website might actually be the ones that have the vulnerabilities in the holes. So you always have to monitor your different tools to make sure that they're always up to date, they're always being patched, or if there is a vulnerability that you might have to switch to another solution to keep your site secure. Right? Cause I know when we look at personal identifiable information, when you're selling something and you're the, you're the seller of an item or product or service, you have to make sure that your, your website solution is secure. So just to kind of let people know, I mean, I was just looking at a couple of things that the, the news today and the phishing attack in the government and the military is starting to become rampant even more and more. And the challenge with that is uh, what we're finding is that these guys are the ones supposed to be protecting us and they're vulnerable. There's open doors. So, you know, there's, Phishing attacks are increasing. Uh, again, we're talking about the flaws with the with the WordPress, the Jetpack plugin. Uh, uh, backdoor yeah. abuse for TeamViewer. Now, TeamViewer is one of the applications that a lot of people use for remote remote control. So exactly. if you're, you're right. a tech person, you're just a support person, you might have the free version or you might have the pay version. But actually, there's a, there's a backdoor access that people are doing. Uh, it's a, a Flash plugin. Oh, and okay. what, they're show, what they're showing is that, oh, you need this Flash plugin. And they're trying to up, make you update it. Well, when you update, it, you actually open up a back door to TeamViewer that now that per, that hacker can get access to your clients' PCs and then put malware mm-hmm. or spyware or anything on their system. That now happens is they're now they're they've been breached. So some things that people look at. I mean, I try to look through the news, you know, as, as much as I can every day. But right. the amount of cybersecurity compromises things that are out there. I mean, I know this morning when I looked through. There was a, over 1,100 as of 9 o'clock this morning, 1,100 articles. Wow. Well, that's a good reason, I guess, for me to go to your site on a regular basis to try and figure out and sort through uh, some, some of the latest things that are going on. Um, I keep hearing more and more about Adobe not doing as much as they should be doing as far as because we all see the JavaScript that things needs to be updated and Adobe Flash needs to be updated and all that. What do you think about Adobe? Are they really doing enough as far as you're concerned? Well, I don't think they're, I think they're trying to, but it's like we've talked about in several episodes, it's always a catch up game, right? (laughs) Right. It is right They're They're probably at this point in the game, they're going to need to start setting up like a bounty program. Like we've heard what, you know, we've talked about other companies is that they have a bounty program where, Hackers, white hat, you know, even gray hat hackers and, and fuzzers that are out there. What right. they'll do is they'll try to compromise the, you know, the updates, the new applications, anything along that line, and then help them patch it to make sure they're more secure. Because that's the only way in this day and age right now is you are you are doing red team type testing, right? Oh, okay. Kind of go back through that. So if someone's watching this, there's two two types when you look at IT security. There's two types of teams when you're looking at the security model. There's a blue team which sets up to your security. 
they set up your infrastructure, your policies, your procedures. You know, they make sure everything's set up to a certain standard. And again, looking at the risk analysis is that how much can the company afford? All right, with Adobe, they can afford a lot to secure because they're making a lot of money. So the more yeah. money you make, the more security you need. So the blue team is the one trying to set up the security. The red team is trying to penetrate. They're trying to compromise it. So when you do that, they set it up and then you test it by penetration testing to making sure it's secure, that there's no holes, nothing's missing. And having that red team type testing helps to make you more secure because we're never perfect. There's always things that change. There's applications, hardware is always transitioning, updating. There's change management, right? As we go through, things are updating, which then can leave holes. So if you have a penetration testing team, a red team that's always testing, you can always secure the holes. All right, let me make sure I understand this. So within one company, my company, for instance, I should have these, these, opposite, these countering forces within my corporation. Uh, on the one side, the people who are setting up the latest security implementation for, for, for our website, right? Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, we should have this other team um, who, who's, 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 who's trying to take a look at what we just implemented to, to test out and verify whether or not we're actually as secure as we think we are. Exactly. So okay. So it's a constant balancing act. It's, it's a proactive way of securing your system, right? Okay. Instead of a reactive where, Oh, we've got compromise. Now what do we do? Now as a practical example, how about this? From what I understand when, 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 when we, because we want to have HTTPS, I guess, on by default. Mm -hmm. for most websites, because I think you talked about clear text mm -hmm. being the, 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 the major issue as far as us taking for granted what we're sending out over the internet, right? Exactly. And that, that simply means, Donald, for all you guys that are gonna come back and we play this, when, when, we, when, we, when we surf the internet, when we do certain things over the internet, a lot of that information is readable and, and, and viewable and, and it doesn't take very much effort right, Brandon, to see that clear text information, to see information when you have a website that doesn't have the HTTPS, right? That's exactly. highly yeah. visible, okay? So I guess by default, we want to have a situation or a world where no matter what you're doing online, when you log on to any website, we want to, uh, I, I assume we want to have HTTPS and we want to make sure that that's encrypted and that any entity, entity government, uh, hacker, whoever, they should have to work a little bit harder to see and, and understand what we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Okay. And so, that's why like, we go back to the scenario you're talking about, if, you're, if it's a red team type testing, right. you set up the HTTPS certificate, the SSL or TLS certificate, and then you have a red team test it to make sure they can't breach that certificate. Okay, now when we talk about, because we got my jargon alert thing goes off, when, when Brandon starts throwing out these acronyms and we, it's SSL and it's TLS and okay, wh why should I be concerned about the SSLs and the TLSs? What, what, are the, what does that mean exactly to so, me? And this is great because we're, we're, this is, leads into like the e-commerce solution is because what happens is if you're encrypting your data, right? Especially when we're talking about web or e-commerce, what you want to use is you want to use a, some form of encryption. Well, that encryption, that certificate that encrypts it is a SSL, which is a secure socket layer, or TLS, which is transport layer security, is that certificate that encrypts the data that's being transferred. So there's a private key and a public key that now makes that relationship so that you know that the data that you're entering, your first name, last name, e email address, your mailing address, your credit card information is all okay. in secure text. It's encrypted. So what happens is that me as a hacker, I can't sniff or monitor that right from trying to capture that and then utilize that to compromise you in some way. So that's why we're talking about HTTPS as a secure transport protocol when you're using you know e-commerce or you're shopping online, so that you provide that level of security, that next level that it's not plain text. It's like okay. not me writing hi, my name is this, it's actually jargon that okay. you won't understand unless you can unencrypt un it or de-encrypt it. Now so you can say, oh, that's Brandon's name. So what it does is it encrypts it so I can't read it in, in so, just plain text. Okay, so that's garbled by default. Mm -hmm. Now, as we transition from a world where we're, I guess, are we moving, in your opinion, away from SSL? Because correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I understand, SSL was the initial encryption scheme that we were using way back when. Um, 
uh, maybe Netscape or somebody came up with that protocol. And then now we're, lo we're looking at TLS, transport layer, mm -hmm. uh, and that is getting us to a point where we have a strong en encryption scheme because I think we went SSL 3.0 and, and that was pretty much it. They decided, okay, we're not gonna go any further than that, Donald. So if you have SSL, you may wanna look at TLS, I think. Mm -hmm. But I think we're get, we got to the point where we have TLS 1.1.0 and TLS 1.2, and I don't know if we're at a two yet, but I think- I think we're at two right now, 2.0. Okay, so if we can get minimum TLS 1.0, when you go to your hosting company, Donald, or whatever, who manages your site or you guys, if you if you want to make sure you have TLS 1.0, preferably all the way up to 2.0, if you can get it, then you're going to have a maximum, you're going to have latest, uh, strong versions of, uh, of, of the security algorithm that, uh, algorithms and protocols for your e-commerce. And, and you should be, you should be just fine as far as uh, having e-commerce uh, uh, security on your websites, right? Exactly. I mean, that's what we have to do. And you have to look at trying to stay up with security. If you are a level below, I'm not going to say you're going to get hacked or you're going to be compromised. Right. But again, once that one gets breached, you're going to have to catch up to the next level, which now is, is a higher level of encryption. And that's why you got to look at your risk analysis. If you're just doing, you're selling a basic ebook and it's just to the general public, yeah, you know, using TLS 1.0 might suffice. But if you're selling a $10,000, you know, product, package, membership, whatever that may be, you want to have the higher level of security because, again, if you get compromised, it's not even just affecting your business. It's affecting your clients. It's affecting your reputation. So you want to make sure you have that next level of, of security. And that's, that's why it's so important to keep up on what's going with cybersecurity. And especially if you're running a business, I mean, if you're a shopper, it's good to understand this and know this. If you're a, a client and a user of the systems that you're trying to go shop with to understand what questions to ask and be educated. But if you're actually a seller, you're a business, you, you want to be at the highest level of security that you can be for your business because that's the level of protection. If you're not or you're negating it that, ah, don't worry, I'll, I'll deal with security later. That's the point when you're going to get compromised. And now it's not going to be the point where you're relaxed. It's going to be a firestorm. You're okay. going to be like, oh, my God, you know, the, the world's blowing up. I need, I need, I need, I need. And we don't want you to be at that point. And then let me ask you a question. Now, as we consider um, the various TLSs going from the 1.0 all the way up to whatever we're at, 2.0 or something, um, is there typically – got to turn this thing off. Is there, sorry. Is there a premium associated – with um as far as the costs are concerned looking at uh going from 1.0 to any, anything higher uh, and as far as uh, like to TLS 2.0 do i pay more for that or how does that work you're gonna pay a little bit more for it but what happens is you gotta look at the different vendors and you gotta be very careful too because what happens is because it's not standardized through certain channels that you can only buy it from the internet authority or something along that line a lot of people are selling them you got to make sure you go to a credible resource. Like I tell people, look at Semantic, McAfee, and you know even those resources, and there's other ones out there. Or talk to their hosting company and see what they recommend and what they use for their system. Like so, if you use GoDaddy, WireTree, uh, Bluehost, whatever, them, ask them what what they use for their TLS security and what level and where they buy their certificate. Because then you know because they have to secure hundreds, if not thousands, of websites. So they have a valid certificate authority because if they get compromised, everyone gets compromised and that ruins the reputation. So doing the research before you buy it, because I've seen some that are like $9 and 99 cents and I've seen some that are a couple hundred dollars. Right. And I've seen some that are a thousand dollars. So you have to look at what level of security you're looking for and then where, what's the resource you're getting it from. Okay. Now you just threw out another term. Okay. Now I'm scratching my head again. What, what, what is the certificate authority authority? And why should I be concerned about that type of entity? What, what role do they play in this? So again, when we're looking at HTTPS or any kind of secure socket layer or TLS, there's an authority that, that gives you a certificate. It's literally like a paper certificate. Think of it that way. Okay. That says that this is the website, this is the information, and it validates that that certificate then that TLS certificate is for your company. So what okay. happens if I look up the certificate authority, 
and I want to say Monty has this you know, certificate and I want to validate that it's true, I can look up the certificate authority and do research on it to make sure it's it's a correct and it's it's up to date because Monty might not might be saying yeah I have TLS uh, security and what happens is when I look at the certificate it might be out date out date out of date so then what happens I'm like hold on a second here you know I thought he was secure but he's not he's actually way behind he's not up to date in his his, his certificate so the actual TLS certificate he's using the socket layer is not actually up to date. So then when it happens, I have to question as someone who's security conscious, if I want to do business with them. Now, what are the red, what are the red flags for consumers? If I go into a website and if there's a problem, is there anything that I would notice? How would that look to me as a, as a, as a consumer? So when you go to the website, you can actually go to your history and look up certificate authority and then see the certificate. So what do you want to look at? Is there a certificate under that company's name? Right? Is certificate up to date? Does the certificate say like it's the most current TLS certificate or if it's is a jargon? Is it jargon that it doesn't make sense? These are red flags you have to look for because if it's like X, no, that's not it. No, that's not it. No, that's not it. You got to be careful. Now, okay. that could be okay, well, just one second. Now, you say when I should go to, to history. So, yeah, when you go into like I'm going to use um, uh, Chrome, for example, when you go into your search, your hist like your settings, sorry, your settings, you can look up the certificate authority under there on your settings, right? And you can look under and see what the certificate authority, like the certificate is for that site. Okay. Now, what about when you click on that lock? Typically, do you get any information at all that may be pertinent? If, if, if Donald has a site or I have a site or you have a site, if we click on those locks, is there anything I can see in there that may give me the impression that this thing is up to date or valid or whatever? Yeah, I mean, you can look at the different permissions, the different plugins. You can also look at site settings, right? That will give you that information. So when you click on site settings, the same thing that I'm talking about right now where you go into your settings. Right. Where you can look at the certificate authority under there. Now, what we'll do is if you guys have any more questions and want me to go in more detail about it, Right. Send me an email. What happens? I can do more screenshots and stuff like that. But okay. kind of just on a, on a basic level, because right. you got you got to remember, we have Internet Explorer, you have Firefox, you have Chrome, and, right? Yeah, exactly. All, all these different browsers where to see it. But at the end of the day, what you want to do is you can even Google search or do a search on YouTube, and you'll see how to look at the certificate authority. But at the end of the day, you want to do this this due diligence because if you're spending money and you're you're giving your credit card information, your PayPal, uh, even if you're doing your Bitcoin. You want to make sure it's being secured okay. that it's not also being sold on the dark web a day later in this list of you know a thousand websites that have been compromised. Uh, very good. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate that uh, very comprehensive analysis because I think that's going to get us uh, not only uh, segue into what I want <laughs> something I want to bring up, but I think people are going to understand that that we at least have a starting point so that if again if the, if you want to do a screen share with Brandon to find out exactly how to ver how to verify information from site to site just 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 in case you want to test out this cuz this is public information a lot of times you guys when you shop from place to place and you may want to practice a few times just to take a look at it and see because i, I actually update my um uh my uh, certificate authority authority um as uh, uh, once a year you know, I could do a two year renewal or but but I have to go through the same process they ver verify my company name the address blah 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 and, and, and then we make sure everything is up to date now I'm, I'm hearing about something let me speak on something kind of briefly and then you tell me what you what you what your opinion is of this uh, Brandon mm -hmm. uh, and, and down on you guys I, I I heard I read about something called um, let's encrypt and mm -hmm. Let's Encrypt seems to be an attempt by um, a, a bunch of people, like the uh, people who want us to have um, uh, a secure, safe place where we can browse the internet and not have everyone snoop in on our, on our information and see what we're doing, what we're buying, and all of that. It's, it's, right. Yeah, it seems to be an organization that cares about keeping us safe, um, keeping the hackers out, keeping the government snoopers out as much as possible. At the same time, what makes this what makes this entity unique, the Let's Encrypt people, they're uh, actually um, offering a free service. Now, typically, when I renew my certificate, I got to pay a certain fee. You know, 
there's a company out there. There's a few companies out there, uh, you know, that 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 come to mind. I think uh, Verisign, Akamai, or uh, yeah. Komodo, whatever, yada yada yada. They charge you a fee, but this less encrypt. Uh, org uh, uh, organization, they're they're they're, um, they're it's all free, and and what they're trying to do is they're trying to make this affordable and they're trying to make this very easy, in terms of you getting that certificate, getting the getting it uploaded onto your server, and having encryption on by default, and not having to worry about uh, renewal and all of that. Um, what do you think about that 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 particular type of approach? I think it's. I think it should be a standardized way of, of us doing any type of website. So if you have a website, you should, uh, by default, have secure encryption. Right? It should be part of the service that they're offering on any type of. <laughs> so I was asking if I could check the. Can you check out Blab Cafe for site security? So yeah, we'll talk about that after. Uh, yeah, we're gonna uh, tell you. We're gonna broadcast. For the whole Blab community, whether that we found a vulnerability that's <laughs> on the air, no, I don't think so. <laughs> but yeah, what happens is when you look at global security like this, this is a great movement that you see. Like if you go to uh, Let'sEncrypt.org, which is the website I'm just I've just pulled up here on my other monitor, right? And you can see the major sponsors are a lot of the bigger companies. Like you, okay. you got Mozilla, you got Chrome, you got Internet Security, you got Facebook, you got Shopify, uh, Secure, Security. Uh, a lot of the Hewlett Packer, so you got a lot of the big companies there that are, are understanding the need for this. And this should be part of your web hosting type solution where you come in and say, hey, you know what? Here we go. You sign it. You you want a URL. You want a domain name. Guess what? On top of that, we're going to give you you know secure browsing encryption, okay. and that's part of the service. It should be that that way to this point. And what happens is if you if we get to that point that it's all included, the level of encryption, the level of security now increases. It's now a global approach versus now it's up to the user, the business owner, to make that decision. Right? Because like you said, let's encrypt. I have to I found out from yourself. I have to go now and go take action and do that. But now say all my clients, I have to go out and educate them and, and so forth and so forth. Well, this should be a, on the hosting level that they're saying, no, we're going to just flip everyone over. Oh, okay. if, you, if you have a website with us, we're going to turn on the new SSL certificate, you know, or TLS certificate that we, right. have, we purchased now has a, a global security for everyone that registers with us. Okay. And that's where it should be. So let me make sure I understand this. So should I, should we all, immediately call our hosting companies and tell them let's can you check out let's encrypt can you see if you can put that on your server and is that the type of thing that maybe we can see if we can get in you know get spread out there because i i think they went from zero to like a million users already so so i'm getting i'm under i'm under the impression that this is like an aval avalanche that's already getting started. So maybe I can go to my hosting company when we finish the blab and, and ask them. What do you think? For, for sure. I mean, I think what's going to happen is not, and see, this is where I'm, I'm talking about. It's It can't be user to user. Okay. Right? Because if I call my company, I call my hosting company and say, hey, you know what? Can we set up Let's Encrypt? They say, yeah. Yes, you can. All you need is this, this, and this, and we'll go through the configuration. And then my site's secure. What we need to do as users, as a community, is saying, Hey, can you incorporate this for oh. all users? Okay, everybody right. in there, all the customers on that on that server with that, that all all the customers that they serve with all of the servers. Because if everyone watching this and everyone sharing this, if I tell ten people and you tell ten people and everyone calls their hosting company and say, "Hey, we want this on all our sites," now it's up to the hosting company to blanket oh, their users. Okay. That's versus good. like. Versus like, and this is where we come into problems when we have shared hosting, right? And this again, coming back to e-commerce, right? When you have shared hosting and you're on a share hosting plan because it's more cost effective and you're in a, a hardware, in, the, in a model where you're in, on different websites. So your website might be secure. You might be doing all the security, but the other John Doe that doesn't know about security, his website might be open door policy where oh, anyone okay. can get into it. Right. Well, if he hacks into the hard drive 
and they get into that shared shared source, what happens? They get in there. They can go. It doesn't matter if you have encryption for outside people to come encryption. They can get them back into your HTT or HTML code or your CSS, and now they can corrupt your website. And you're going to go, oh my god! But I thought I was secure. Yeah, you're secure browsing, but your site might not be secure because the back entrance where it's stored. It's been thinking of it this way. Yeah, you might have a warehouse, right? And your warehouse might be the most security you have, and you have lights, you have alarms, you have all that. But if the sewer is open for the general person to go up and come in through the sewer and open the door and you know, open the, the sewer gate and get in, it doesn't matter how much security you have on the outside in the exterior. People just walked right in. Oh, okay. so, so the same thing that we're talking about right now is that if I secure my website, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm secure on the hosting because there's other people that might be on that hosting you know, service that might be not secure and they're going to be the, the open door, the weak link in, in my security chain. So I need to think of top-down approach. I need to think of high level. The company needs to start securing everyone. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you made that um, the evident and obvious so that we, 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 all, we all understand. Now, let's see. Um, so, I go, so hopefully, make sure I understand what you're saying. We, we want to make sure that um, we, we get this imp- implemented because from what I understand, Brandon, it costs more money for the various government agencies who want to snoop and find out what we're doing, where we're browsing, what, we, what we're buying on the Internet and all of that stuff. When, when, when we have an uh, insecure environment, they don't spend very much money at all. They don't, that, that, that doesn't, that doesn't uh, entail a lot of resources being used or whatever. If, if we're just communicating, like you said, clear text out in the open, browsing HTTP, that, that's easy to snoop on, easy to collect data. Mm-hmm. But when we, when we start to encrypt the cost, that's an added cost, an added burden on anyone who wants to find out what I'm doing, what I'm saying, right? Oh, exactly. But I think I think well, let's kind of talk. We're talking about the government agencies, like you know, the all the all the alphabets, CIA, FBI, exactly, right. NSA, all those ones. If they're if they're snooping all that and they're collecting information, I mean, you, you want to work with them as best as possible. You want to make sure that as you're working with them, you're not you know you know hiding information because then again, you're starting to get into legal issues. But you want to make sure that your financial and all your information as a, as a company is secure, right? For anyone that want, wants to do it. So if you're doing like, and I'll use this example so people can understand, like, uh, and I'm in Canada, so we have the Canadian Revenue Agency. The Americans have the IRS, and you have to do financial reports and all that. You want to make sure that's available for the government. That you go to account, you get the right reports, profit and loss, all that stuff, and you 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 give that to them. Because if you don't and you're hiding money, you can get in trouble. So if it comes to confidential information and things that you're doing in your business, you want to keep that secure on your web, in, in your internal system. And then you, if the government asks for it, you want to make sure why and have the right you know, paperwork and documentation. So when you're doing, like Monty's saying, when you're doing secure systems on your, on your website, on your e-commerce, anything along that line, you want to make sure the front end and your back end secure. And if anyone needs information, they request it. They go through the proper channels. They can't just snoop, right? And this is what we're talking about being secure. They make sure that everything that they do is gone through proper channels. There's documentation. Why are you asking for this information? What do I need to prove? What legally do I need to provide? So all this is protected. And then, uh, Sue Broadcast is that same. Uh, I think that may be a conflict with, with what Brandon is actually doing here, but some people don't know how to do this. And this is why we're here today is really kind of <laughs> talk about how to do this. Right. And why, not just how, but why to do it. Because a lot of people kind of do it and kind of go, well, I was told I had to do the security. You know, so my friend told me, my business partner, whatever told me that we need the security. But the thing is, why? Why yeah. do you need to do it? And with the compromise that we're having with cybersecurity now, right. it's more important to look at both sides, how to build your business yeah. and how to keep it secure. Yeah, see, what, what, just, just to reiterate what, what, he, what Brandon just said, typically what we do, you guys, we're, we're going to tell you in, in the initial part of the show, like the current events part, is typically where we tell you there's been a problem. The, um, the LinkedIn has uh, 117 million uh, records compromised just lately, okay? So uh, LinkedIn has May seventeenth. Yeah, uh, LinkedIn has a total of four hundred million 
uh, customers, right? M members so far. But, uh, but a quarter of them roughly, I think that's a quarter, uh, have been compromised, right? So, so that, that's, that's the equivalent to the size of Mexico, I think, uh, or something like that. That's a, that's a lot of people. Um, and, 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 and believe it or not, uh, I'm going to throw out a term, and, and Brandy can talk about this term, what it means, but they were using a very low level of encryption, you guys. A site like LinkedIn, who purportedly is catering to professionals. A lot of these professionals are, guess what, IT people. <laughs> I, uh, security people who could have said LinkedIn, look, if you need somebody to help you secure your database, I'm right here. <laughs> you know, you know, we're looking for jobs and we're trying to network, but I'm actually a, a member, I'm, a, you know, of your site. And there was absolutely no reason for LinkedIn to use what we call SHA One. SHA One is the equivalent of the uh, of old technology, and Brandon can talk about the specifics, but that's it's, equivalent. To it's like having a screen door, <laughs> right? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go on. No, but that's what you're talking about. It's like having a screen door and saying, hey, I have security. Let me put the screen door in my front entrance. Right. And everyone kind of looks through and goes, oh, hey, let me stick my hand through your screen. Well, that's what happened. They stuck their hand through the screen and, you know, grabbed all those, you know, uh, personal identifiable information records. Right. And just walked away with it. Now they're being sold on the dark web. I mean, Tumblr, uh, one of the, the articles I was reading this morning, they just got compromised. Oh, okay. So, wow. So, Again, I mean, we see this time and time again, websites when you're doing like sur surfing on the line, like it doesn't matter if you're doing e-commerce or you're doing sales or, or, or purchasing, but sites in total, right? And you think in this way, let's kind of pick on LinkedIn a little bit because of Monty brought that up. People pay for ads on LinkedIn. So you think about all your credit card information, all your, bill your oh, billing yeah. information right. is all there. So we go back yeah. to e-commerce is that here you go, here's your purchasing solution. So I'm gonna go and buy an ad from LinkedIn because I wanna go promote. Or maybe I want to go into LinkedIn. I want to go in their different services. I want not basic. I want to go a premium or their, oh, yeah. you know, their, their business solution. So what happens? I can see who's more people who are, are going into my viewing my profile. I can see who they are. I can contact them. I can email them now directly. And I can do right. all these other features. But that billing information now is in the back end of LinkedIn in their database, and then that's that's what's getting compromised. So they're not really thinking, right? As the security measure, they're thinking of this that stuff. Like you're saying is building, building this large community, getting money, <laughs> revenue models. But they didn't realize like we talked about that two side is that as I build, the more security I need. Exactly. And, and, and see LinkedIn, um, actually, I, I think in my opinion, they need, they need to consider uh, that they had an opportunity when they had the initial data breach way back when to- It was a year ago. Yeah, lock everyone out. And, and say, look, you guys, we, we had a compromise. We got, you're going to have to get a new password, okay? And, we, and see, there's a thing called uh, two-factor authentication, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so broadcasting, um, that, that we have what we call um, uh, two-factor authentication. There's absolutely no reason why LinkedIn uh, uh, couldn't have implemented that. It could have been done very easily. And, you know, a, a, as, a, as a member, when they had that initial data breach, they could have locked the accounts and said, look, you guys get a log back in with a new password and, 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 and let's do something a little bit more secure. But um, getting to your question about uh, Facebook, I think so broadcasting talked about Facebook and Twitter. They seem to have uh, protocols that are a little bit more, um, a, a little bit more of an impediment when it comes to uh, making sure that I have to go through a number of steps as a hacker or whatever in order to compromise those accounts. Facebook more, Twitter not as much. So Facebook does have the dual authentication as well as you can go through and see where people have logged in, what browser, what browser, where they are, where they are geographically. So if you're in the United States and someone's from Bangladesh and trying to log in, you can you can boot them out. So Facebook has stepped up their security because they understand right. the the concern of it and the compromise. And don't get me wrong, Facebook has bounty programs. Right? They have bounty programs constantly that they're paying out. Uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and people, you know, trying to penetrate their, their system. And this is what we talked about before. Hey, Christy. So this is what we talked about before is that companies need to have these bounty programs, right? Of people on that red team trying to hack in and penetrate their system to make sure that they're secure. And that's why it's so important. And I think what we we're getting down to is like, when we talk about like e-commerce, we have to really think about, you know, 
what's the best way to look at security as a business and what we talked about, you know, for the first half hours as a business, how to secure it and as a user, right? How do you look at your security? I mean, I've got some points here. Like you look at password breaches, password breaches is one of the number one things that you look at uh, for compromises on e any e-commerce site or site that you have to authenticate or log in because majority of people use the same username and same password for all websites. They, they have, you know, their email address and they use, you know, this password, password one, two, three, four, five. Now, I'm not saying they use that one specifically, but they use that sequence of, you know, right, characters yeah. for every single, you know, site. And then one site gets compromised, all their sites gets compromised. And it's not that hard to socially engineer someone this day and age where I can say, hey, I know Monty. Let me look at Monty's Facebook page. Let me look at it. So I know now Monty's first name and his last name. I know where he's located. So now I go through and now I start saying, okay, is he on Twitter? Oh, I found him on Twitter. Oh, is he on Tumblr? Is he on LinkedIn? Is he on this? Yeah. And now I create a profile. Now I just try the password that I have on each of those sites. And eventually I get it. Yeah. Now I'm in and now I know that password works. And then if I try that password on each of his sites, well, guess what? If I get into 80% of them, now I'm in. And that could be now that he uses the same password for Facebook as he does his bank account. Now, for, because I own a business of my own, you guys, I have to tell you that it's not a perfect world out there by, by any stretch. And, and some of the things you got to be aware of are, see, that we have, um, we have situations where we have merchants whose obligation is to take as many credit cards and process them <laughs> and make as much money as possible when we sell things as businesses. And then the, the other side of that table, there, there's banks who want to who want to uh, who, who want to be responsible for ultimately taking money out of your account, putting it in my account, and, and etc. Okay, but what what was what's happening is there, there's 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 um it's not a perfect system, and unfortunately, um we we just have situations where we have to double check and make absolutely sure that we're doing as much as possible to to to, to keep our accounts safe. And to make sure, I'll give you a practical, practical example, okay? A lot of times when I take a credit card from a customer and Brandon wants me to ship something to someone else other than the, the billing address on his account. Now, for me, a red flag goes out because it says, look, maybe that's uh, someone who stole a credit card and maybe he, has a good, maybe he has a credit card that he got from somewhere else and he wants that merchandise to be shipped to his own physical address as compared to the credit card holder's address, right? Now I have to do a little bit, a little bit more work because I find that a lot of co companies out there, you guys, they will take a credit card and assume that just because I got a credit card, I'm just, I'm good, right? I can just charge it. I'm going to be fine. No, you're not fine just because you got a credit card. You could have a stolen credit card and that billing address is where the credit card holder is, but the shipping address is the person who is the actual person who wants stolen merchandise delivered to them. So a lot of times me, for instance, I go through a manual process where I will literally call a bank and verify whose name is on this account. Is this a good phone number? Is this a good address? And believe it or not, I have discovered numerous situations where the information was, it, it didn't match and it didn't belong to the actual credit card holder. Okay. But I'm a security expert, and that's what I do for a living, okay? Brandon is a cybersecurity expert, and you should call him if you have any question, because I'm not in the business of teaching people how to protect their information so much as Brandon is. My, my thing is physical security. But that's, this is an example of where things can break down. Again, someone can steal your credit card, have the have merchandise shipped to somewhere else, and... Uh, that's what's going to happen. It's going to happen quickly, and and it, and, and, and it will and, and it will get done if no one checks. But someone has to check, and this is this is this is what, what we're up against, you guys. So let's talk about Soul Broadcast. It was asking asking. That was a great point, Monty, and, and we'll, we'll come back to that. But so so Broadcast was asking about what we talked about earlier was about WordPress and the plugins, the security plugins. And I talked about earlier. I don't know if you saw that uh, that. Jetpack, which is supposed to be one of the security plugins, is actually now being you know advertised by Secu uh, Security Security that there's a breach in that 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 uh, plugin because now people can compromise it. 
So what you have to do, and I think it's a cross-site script attack that they're doing on it. What you have to do now is you have to keep up to date and monitoring your pat your your plugins, making sure they're up to date. Any patches that come out for them, that you're on top of them like daily. And I know sometimes it's a little bit harder thing to to maintain, but you should be at least going into your website, if not daily, minimum weekly, right, to go in and see what plugins need to be updated, making sure they they can update. Now, I always recommend, and here's kind of a, a policy: is one, you back up your site before you 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 update it. Two, then you run the update, make sure that the updates run fine, that there's no conflicts in the plugins. And then two, you, you go back through your site and you make sure. And this is part of your change management. I would do this mostly at nights or on the weekends. So this way, if something goes down, you have time to fix it so it's not affecting your live business. So that's kind of a, a security policy that, you know, just on a base level. Um, I know uh, it's right now, it's uh, 1038. Now, if you guys are finding this is great information, what I ask you right to, to do right now is share this out through Facebook, share this out through Twitter. Again, our goal is the more people that get information, the better it is for us. Because again, the, the vulnerabilities that we're looking at right now is not maybe us, because we're you know all of us here are, are security conscious. It's the people that we know, the people that we do business with, the people that we connect with. They're the ones that potentially can be vulnerable that can affect us. So, and now uh, uh, Christy was talking about uh, her security uh, password policy. Now, this is what I like to ask you, Christy. Uh, what do you do? And I know you said you use a password manager. What password manager are you using? I don't know if she just jumped out. Half the jet, have a great day, uh, blab, gents. Okay, yeah, she took off. But I like to know what she's using. Because one thing that when we're talking about password breaches is one thing we talked about earlier and we've talked about on different shows is that people need to look at, one, having a Six, 12 to 16 character, secure password, uppercase, lowercase, special characters for each individual site. And how they store that is they need to store that in an encrypted file, right? Have that file encrypted if they have it on their desktop, if they have it on a USB, and then have that folder, put it in a folder and have that folder encrypted. So it's two levels of encryption. So that what happens is people cannot get access to it. Now, I have users that walk around with a USB, so they encrypt the, the actual notepad that they use for the for the password, and they encrypt the actual USB. So they have to authenticate it to it twice. So if they've ever misplaced that USB, it doesn't matter. There's people still can't get access to it. Now, uh, Sol is asking, do you think servers are good security than normal, than normal PIC? Uh, do you want to just clarify that? What do you mean by pick? Like, and when I look see a PIC, I think a picture. Oh, computers. So, do you think servers are secure, are good security than normal computers? Security is only as good as what you, how you harden the system. So, it depends on the actual what you do with the system. I mean, if you have a Windows server and it's not hardened, it's not secure. It doesn't matter. You know, comparable. Uh, so you're talking about for the antiviruses again. When we talk about the antivirus program, it depends on how you update it and how you maintain that antivirus program and what you're doing with the files and what access people have. So when you look at security, you got to look at all different directions of it. Some people think of okay, you know, it's one, it's unidirectional. Okay, I have an antivirus program, so now I'm not going to get any viruses. Well, if you have your email policy is that people can get any attachment and any type of you know email. Then what happens is it doesn't matter if you have an antivirus program, your, your antivirus system is always going to be tested. And if it's not up to date in the newest definition, you're potentially going to get breached. Because remember, with antivirus programs, they're always behind. That's the problem with them. They're always trying to catch up. So there's always, you know, spyware, viruses, antivirus, or, uh, viruses that are written out, uh, you know, adware, malware, anything that's written out there that these antivirus companies are trying to write patches and definitions to keep up. And then there's new ones that come out and they're trying to catch up. So it's always this, you know, race to catch up. So again, you have to look at the security of securing your email systems, making sure that process is secure, making sure the server is hard and that, you know, different structures of this, the server as well as your computer doesn't have global access that anyone, like, you know, everyone can access. Now this is kind of important too, you guys in the future, because uh, as Randy pointed out, these, Plugins that we use, that is an area of of, uh, of of vulnerability itself, because if we if you have a lot of plugins that that are running in your various browsers to do this and do that, do the other. Guess what? You have to make sure on a continuous basis that they're all 
uh, uh, someone's trying to call in that that they're all updated, right? And and and, and but in, but I think uh, Microsoft, everybody from Microsoft to uh, the people Google and everybody else, I think they're finally starting to realize that's an area of vulnerability, because mm -hmm. again, if you don't keep the latest plugins updated. And there and there's a vulnerability discovered. You could you 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 could you could be at a you know you could be at risk, right? And exactly. Yeah. So I think what's going to happen, you guys, in the future, far as I can tell, um, uh, you you're going to we're going to live in a world where if there's a if there's a plugin or update necessary, you're probably going to give it permission at that time. To do something, to do whatever you need to do at that moment. I think they call it click and play or something. But in the future, we won't have to worry about fifty different plugins that need to be updated, and 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 such. Because uh, I think I think this is going to be a part of the way we interact with websites once we start browsing the internet, as compared to keeping a laundry list of plugins updated on a regular basis. So I think that's going to be good news. What, what do you think? No, it's true, and I, and I agree with that. And I think what happens is you have. As users, we have to do that security awareness training. We have to look at what is the plugin, what's the vulnerability. Should I do I really need it? Is it going to help me with my security? Is it going to help with you know my my functionality? Because I mean, we talked about this earlier, and we'll talk about this again. Is the CIA of security: the confidentiality, data integrity, and availability. When you look at all those three aspects of security, you look at okay, is the information what I'm doing confidential? Is the data that I'm sharing and I'm I'm putting out there is it integral like is it put together or it can be it corrupted and then the availability is it accessible that for everyone to use it in the right manner or is it just just kind of really out there and that's why we're looking at when we go back to e-commerce you have to look at you know is the information that people are putting in to your e-commerce or purchasing or selling is it confidential can you keep the data into integral that you're going to make sure that it's secure that I've, i give my information to this company is it going to be safe and the availability, how accessible is it, one, for people to get access to it? And how accessible is it for me to be able to change it and modify it? All right, so you got to look at all those areas. And, and which brings me to the, the next point that I want to talk about when we talk about e-commerce is DDoS attacks, which is distributed denial of service attacks where people set up multiple nodes, PCs or servers, or whatever, and try to attack a website. Well, what happens is when you look at e-commerce, a lot of times that happens is, People are trying to attack these e-commerce websites to take them down. And you get problems with cross-site scripting where maybe that your uh, forms are not set up properly, they're not secure, so people can put in you know, SQL code or any type of code in it and hit submit, and then it corrupts the form where people can get access. Uh, you got ransomware, which we've talked about a, a few episodes before, where people take your website for hostage, and then if you don't, do you know pay this X amount of dollars between you know 24 hours 48 hours then now they're gonna you know delete your website or, uh, or take all your information right because what happens is with the ransomware majority of the time is what they do is they capture your website and they encrypt it and they're the only ones that have that access to now unencrypt it okay. now you're Go ahead. Uh, okay. yeah right I just want to let you know um, so broadcasting is saying but and someone's trying to come in but how do you see but how do cbi what is cbi i missed something uh, you, FBI, you can, you FBI. Oh, oh, FBI. That's, an, oh that's an yeah. that's another agency okay yeah cbi or or um or the police how do how do they know what you're doing when you got security yeah how, like, how, how do i know what you what you know like how do i know your website how you know know what you are doing like what you're looking at well and, how, how are they going to know what's actually going on yeah what so the user <laughs> the agencies yeah. yeah yeah exactly brandon how, how are those agencies mm. gonna somehow understand and know what i'm you know is there is there a reporting mechanism well, like, uh, we, like we talked about when you got like the secu secure certificate, right? Like the HTTPS. There's a lot of things that you can go, you can go through. And then what, what these companies do, for example, the FBI and the police, if they're really investigating you, what they're doing is they're checking into your code. They're checking into the, the web website structure. Can they get access to your, your HTML files, your public directories? And if they can't, then they know that, okay, yeah, at least they have this security. And then if they go to your website and they see on the top, 
you know, the URL, they say, oh, it's HTTPS. Okay, so he has, you know, secure, you know, surfing. So he has either SSL or TLS. Then they'll look at the certificate, right? Because now if they know you have that, they're going to look at what's your certificate. So they go through this checklist of, of checking through to make sure, okay, what's this level? And that's when they're doing an investigation, like a forensic investigation, mm. right? And this yeah. is the same thing we were just explaining to how users can do the same thing. It's no different. Right. Yeah. Mm. Also, Karender, um, yeah. I don't know whether or not you've heard of this before, but in the United States, we also have the Federal Bureau of Investigations. They have a subdivision just for the internet um, right. called the IC3. You heard of that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, then, thank you. Then, then good. That's good that you know about it because you guys if you suspect that you got a email that's fraudulent in nature mm -hmm. and they're trying to get uh they're trying to you know get information from you or whatever uh you can re you can literally forward that email to the ic3 and they will uh they will actually take a look at it and 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 and, and they will i don't know if they will verify with you and get back with you and follow up and let you know what they found but they investigate uh situations where um you know the uh, you know again someone's trying to uh, uh do a phishing attack or whatever they're trying to do uh forward that email directly to them and and they will and they will take a look at it and see what they can do for you well what about if someone have your email and it's not the source like your email my email you have the email right and it's not the source and someone buy me your email but no, no, I'm so spam, the there's, they're spamming your email? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, what happens is you have these anti-spam filters that you, you, you should be using. And a lot of times what happens is the more public your email address, the more spam you're going to get. So if you put your email address, I'm just saying like you say you had info at my email address dot com and you put it on your Facebook, you put it on your Twitter, you put it on those accounts. The more it's public, the more spam you're going to get because these guys are surfing the web. I mean, yeah. trying to find people they can compromise. So they can find your comments. They just put in their database of their email template that they email out. And then uh, Donald's just saying, just got a call from uh, <laughs> wow. ransoming uh, scam outfit. They say they work for Microsoft. So funny. So wow. we, talked, yeah. we talked about that last week. I, I told my story that I got called seven times, right? One from a company saying they're from the Canadian Revenue Agency saying that, that I had a warrant up for my arrest and I didn't pay this money. And that was a, a huge, huge scam they're doing here in, in, in Ontario. And then uh, a couple of weeks ago, I got the same call from a Microsoft, which is funny because they're saying, oh, yeah, we, we saw this alert. You know, oh my God, you have a virus in your system. We need to log in. So I brought a notepad up and I wrote down where they wanted to go, what they wanted me to pull up. And as I'm seeing there, I can tell they wanted me to do the run command. They wanted me to go through the root directory. They wanted me to put in this. They wanted me to put this code. Wow. They yeah. wanted to get this access. And this is something that we talked about when they, we talked about malware and, and spams and, and, and scams are out there. This is people that have to be aware of because with this CRA scam, last two – Two weeks ago, I talked to the RCMP. Yeah. So it's not, CRA, CRA stands for? K Revenue Agency. So it's like I said Revenue before, it's, like, it, it's the, the the kind of the equivalent of the IRS for, for the United States. Oh, okay. Right. right. So what happens is I called the RCMP, which is the equivalent of the CIA for okay. the States, because that's our high-level uh, policing agency. And right. I called them and let them know that I got this call from the CRA that, guess what, they did this. And they said, you know what, we're getting roughly 1,000 calls per day. Of people that have got compromised and currently and it was about 60 days into the scam the the scammers have already got collected 1.5 million dollars wow. wow yeah the amounts are becoming astronomical um just looking at the federal reserve breaches with the bank of bangladesh and and some of the other federal reserve because our, our in the united states uh Karanda, we have a uh, institution called the Federal Reserve, and each respective country has their various central bankers or whatever. But all of them use this SWIFT system, right? That's how they send money back and forth as far as these major financial institutions are concerned, the ones who actually run the, 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 the monetary system for each country. Those systems have been uh, compromised over and over again. And some of the latest uh, hacks include $80 million here, uh, you know, $20 million there. And what they're what they're finding out is that um, 
the the hacks the hackers have been um, basically sleeping on the networks, hiding out and lurking and and monitoring and, and trying to find out where the vulnerabilities are. So you know, at the, uh, as we always talk about, at the highest levels, we have we have some very si serious issues going on. So we know that we have to do a lot, right? We we have to do a yeah. lot on, on, for ourselves because yeah. again. If, if, the, if, the, if the major institutions, if they can't keep track of, 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 of how to maintain the, the world's monetary system, the, the equivalent of the world's banking system uh, at that level with all the resources that they have, then obviously we need to do a lot, right, Karender? Yeah. On our, yeah, so yeah. let's make sure that we get the word out. You know, mm. uh, your bank, Karender, your... Um, social networking site they should have the equivalent of uh maybe a pseudo email that they issue that doesn't like, say hey, surrender hey, at hey, something you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah we like, need hey, uh, 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 yeah, exactly same thing mm. right so that i think they need to do uh, uh they, they need to do more on their ends because i'm what i understand like craigslist has a uh what do you call that a made up uh um email address right yeah. uh, an anonymous alias? anonymous an alias, uh, alias. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. they have an alias that they create mm -hmm. for you right so if yeah. the hackers want to spam that that's fine because they can delete that and issue another one immediately right and besides mm -hmm. it doesn't say a whole lot about who you are or what you're doing or anything like that so i think exactly. yeah there, there's a few things that that we need to embrace and put out there and request and demand like we're talking about this let's encrypt thing but yeah we have to demand these things because they're not happening quick enough so we got about six minutes left i want to kind of just finish this list so people that are looking at this e-commerce so they understand so password breaches one point look at your password policy denial of service attacks or, or dos or distributed denial of service attack make sure that when you if you're getting attacked how to protect yourself against that ransomware right. back okay. up your websites Back them up, back them up, because if you ever get hit with ransom, so, ransomware, you can always, you know, just delete your site and then put it back up. Uh, right. Data destruction, right? Something that you have to think with e-commerce is how do you destroy data? You know, what's your policy in the sense of if I have a user that comes and purchases with me, how long do I store that data, right? Do I delete it after a certain amount of time, right? To make sure that now you're not liable that you've held some sort of data that shouldn't have been there, and now what happens? You got compromised. Someone that shopped with you 10 years ago, that shouldn't have been there. So what's your data destruction policy? Or the other side of it, what happens when your data gets destroyed? What's your policy on you know recovery? Oh, okay. Right? Fraud, you know, like Monty was talking about, how do you analyze and do forensic on fraud, right? How do you, do you have your system in place to confirm that it's the right credit card, it's the right person, it's the right mailing address, yeah. it's the right, you know, you know, shipping address, how is that all confirmed? Make sure right. when you're doing it through e-commerce. Right. Right? HTTPS, we talked about in depth, uh, poor website maintenance, right? And we talked about this, making sure that your plugins are updated, your widgets are up to date, your WordPress theme, right? If you use WordPress, which so many people, millions of people use that, that your theme's up to date. Yeah, I and if, one yeah, and if your themes are not up to date, changing the theme, because sometimes the developers stop updating it. There's oh. a certain point, point where they get the updates, 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 and they're always hardening the theme, and then they stop. They wow. stop updating. And this is time where now you need to go and get a new theme. Right. And don't say, oh, I love the theme. I, you know, it's good. It's from 2004. Well, guess what? If it's not being updated and it's not being secure and the code's not being, wow. you know, hard, what yeah. happens now? It starts to leave these open doors that now you get compromised. And, and they go, oh my God, I have security. Why I, is that? I, I, just, I just, yeah, I just thought of something. Maybe you could uh, throw this in there too. A lot of times when you have a secure site, you can have various elements of your site that are not secure. Right, yeah. like when you click on a video, yeah. like when you click on a picture or something, if yeah. that's if that's not HTTPS along with everything everything else, that's mm. a problem, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's what we talk the HTTP the SSL or TLS mm. certificate okay. secure is kind of a secure browsing yeah. on top of it because mm. when you have the image file in there, it's actually secure in the sense that it brings up that URL. So okay. it's a good point, Monty. Right, uh, like I said, plug in widget, WordPress theme, and then make sure you have a sec security in place. Right, you might do all this, you know, updating your, but you have some sort of i theme security or Jetpack or something along that line that you've done research. They have security in place that it changes the file format. It secures certain areas on your website so people can't just walk right in. The database is secure. 
If you do all that, then now you're starting to look at security. So again, I'm just going to go over that list. So for everyone, yeah. password breach to secure, denial of service attacks, ransomware, you know, backup, data destruction or, or data recovery, your fraud, make sure you have a fraud system in place and how to, you know, analyze and make sure there's, you know, if you know there's fraud or not, HTTPS, secure browsing, and then website maintenance, you know, updating your plugins, your widgets, your, your WordPress name and having security in place. If you do all that, <laughs> You're going to be <laughs> on the top level of your security because majority mm. of people, I would say from what I've heard, from what I've heard in the industry, 90% of people are not doing that. Wow. Even, like, <laughs> even for mobile, like, oh, yeah, like right. The phone. For mobile, exactly. 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 Mm -hmm. Like for any people and hot mobile, people and dumb your food, people and dumb your head. Like when you texting someone, you don't know who the other person is. When you're texting someone, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Everything so, is heading to mobile, so you definitely want to make sure that because those are your customers. You you don't have a mm. you have a website too, don't you, Corinda? You have a yeah. website. Okay. Yeah. So mm. you have an obligation, like we have an obligation <clears throat> to our mm. customers, and mm. uh, yeah, that mobile browsing experience has to be secure as well because that's where everything's going, right? Yeah. So yeah, if if their mobiles get compromised because you didn't do your part, then that's a problem. <laughs> exactly. Right. So we've got two minutes left, Corinda. Thank you so much for coming out and giving your insight yeah. and sharing. Good seeing you, Corinda. Definitely, uh -huh. you brought us some very good points. Oh yeah, for sure. And it's always great to have you come out and share. Now, right. Monty, next week, what do you want to talk about? Uh, let's see. I can't think of anything right now that comes to mind. Yeah, um, I, yeah, you know, something. If I if it like something, okay. And I love you for my everything. I'm on your show. Yeah, if you want to come out, yeah, you're yeah. more than welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're always looking for people for, to join in, share information, share their knowledge. Mm. Because when it comes to cybersecurity, you know, it's it's a global issue. I mean, people. I mean, I don't know everything. Monty doesn't know everything. So the more people that bring in information, like, oh my God, I found this out. Oh, there's another way. It's a it's a global issue. It's a global mm. growth strategy because yeah. you can't know everything. There's so many oh, domains yeah. of so security. many moving parts. Uh, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I thought of something. What, what do you think about um um something to do with the 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 the, the, the let's see the, the infrastructure itself? Um, we haven't talked too much about. Well, let me see. What am I trying to say here? Mm. The whole system. Yeah, the whole system in terms of how devices interact with each other. Um, so, so networking? Probably networking, yeah. Networking something, communication? Yes, yeah, something to do with the way devices talk to each other. I'm reading a lot about vulnerabilities in, in, in that area where, where, where we need to get the infrastructure somehow. That, that, that's, that, 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 there's a lot of moving parts in that, in that space where we need to take a look at how uh, systems talk to each other and interact with each other. So let's do that. Let's do, let's look at, for next week's episode, let's talk about, you know, how devices communicate, how to securely communicate between device to, to device. Okay. Because right. I mean, we're, that, that's going to cover in the sense of Internet of Things. Yeah. Right? Because, I mean, we know that is a major, major issue coming up, and it's it's something that, you know, all of us are going to be affected by in the next, you know, two to, two to five years. Exactly. Right. I, I mean, I don't know if you guys have watched the Microsoft uh, or was it Google? Know. It was a conference that just came up and they had the, yeah. the home unit. Oh, it was okay. Google. It was Google. that they, they actually had the home unit now, like the equivalent of Siri. But now you can talk to it. Turn on my lights. Do this. Do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, hey, I have a report. Tell me this information. Put it up on my TV. Oh, can you play the radio? So this one unit now is connected to the whole home system. Oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so <laughs> yeah let's I talk about you know, the connectivity. Connectivity. I there you go. That. I mean that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Brandon, go to uh, Brandon's site. Uh, take mm -hmm. a look around because when we have these blab sessions, we we mm -hmm. cover uh, the tip of the iceberg, and we, he has show notes that he's going to end up with that are going to go into detail in depth in terms of what it actually means to implement TOS, get that certificate on your site, uh, do certain things, the browser plugin things, um, 
a lot, a lot of things, things, a lot of these things have to be covered in detail because, you know, we only have an hour and we, and we have, you know, we have 20 subjects that we can barely touch upon. Uh, so yeah, we, you know, when you start dividing 20 by, I mean, you know, you know, when you start allocating that much, time. we only have 60 minutes. <laughs> it goes by pretty fast. Right. <laughs> Right. Well, guys, it's eleven o'clock. Let's kind of finish this up. Uh, yeah. Make sure you follow us on, you know, on Blab as well as on Twitter. Exactly. Uh, you subscribe to the channel. I have the newsletter that goes out from KNSS Consulting that reminds people on every Friday about what we've talked about this week, the Blab episodes, and like Monty's saying, the show show notes are there on the blog as well. So, guys, I want to make sure you share this out with everyone that you you meet. You're watching the 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 recording of this later. Make sure you share this out. Make sure you come out on, t on Tuesday mornings at 10 o'clock because, again, the more we can communicate with our followers and the people that are watching, the better we can share information because we need to know what you need right, in your security policy so we can talk about this because mm -hmm. you might know about your social media security, but your website security might not be it. Or you might know about you know your website security, but you not know about your physical security. Or you might not know about your policy and procedures in your area. So there's so much of security that we could talk about that we want to help you with. Because exactly. our goal is to make sure the industry, the people, our family and friends are secure. Right. Our enemies, we talk about them, but you know, <laughs> they can come out, but we will help them yeah. be secure as well. Yeah, let's help mm -hmm. them as well. If they get a cold, like we use analogy of people getting sick or something. If, if, if my enemy or whoever gets a cold, guess what? I may get a cold. So if, if we all are, are, are doing our part to, to, to make sure our little area is safe and secure, then maybe overall we'll be secure. My cyber literacy word today, uh, Brandon, will probably be uh, Let's Encrypt. So you guys contact Brandon about Let's Encrypt, understand what it means, why it's important or not important or whatever, and how to get that implemented if you want to take advantage of all the, the things that, 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 is, that it has to offer. Awesome. Well, guys, thanks for coming out. I uh, look forward to seeing you guys next Tuesday. All right. Sounds good. Good to see you.